Hey guys, so I'm actually sitting recording a video for the first time in, well, not very long, let's be honest, I've recorded a lot of videos and they haven't came out, uh, shit, I don't even know what to put up on the screen, this is gonna be a, uh, less of a rant and more of a look back on 2020 for me personally, and a thank you to everybody, but also what to look forward to next year, so, I don't know, put up a cool picture on the screen, I don't know, and I'm sorry if I sound really tired, um, just looking at Adobe Audition fills me with such dread because there are so many things that I want to say about videos that I will probably get to. So before we start, I had this section planned at the end, but I really want to put it to the front because I feel like the people in 2020 have absolutely made my year. And I want to list off a few specific people and groups of people. So my regular friend groups, you guys have kept me on the straight and narrow um, because this year was very, very difficult, probably one of the most difficult years that I've had, and obviously I'll get into that in a minute, but thank you so much. You all know who you are, Sludge uh, especially, you guys are incredible, and I love each and every one of you. Um, a lot of people that I've met that are artists, that are, you know, content creators like solely on Twitter, people that I have followed on YouTube for many years, like um, a few very particular names are Tama and uh, Absol, you guys are, like, the fact that you guys follow me and, like, we interact, that, to me, is, like, really surreal. I sound like such, such a fucking fanboy, but, like, you guys, like, push content, uh, especially in, like, this community, uh, really, really fucking well. And I'm so excited to see what you guys create, uh, you know, in the future. I think that, like, if I was to name drop people, we would be here all day, but everybody who has, like, DM'd me talked with me privately this year, even if you're just uh, a fan of my content and you've like reached out to me and you've been like, hey man, really love your work. It means the fucking world to me, genuinely. And all of you guys push me to do so, so much better. I think this year has been the first year that whenever a content creator has like reached out to me, um, I haven't felt like used as I have uh, in previous years. Well, I mean, maybe a bit at the start of the year, but I won't talk about that. But I genuinely feel that I formed some like real friendships and I'm so excited to see where those go because uh, a lot of my content creator friends are fucking incredible and you guys don't get the, the love that you deserve. All I'm saying is that I have really good taste in friends and people, okay? You guys are awesome. Uh, even if you guys are like bigger or smaller than I am, it's really um, hard to put into words how much of an effect you guys have on me and the constant like drive and push and you know, for any of my friends, you guys know who you are that have, like, talked about, um, like, content ideas with me or any of that sort of thing. You guys are amazing. And I genuinely look forward to seeing where you guys go. Okay, now on to the actual part of the video that I was gonna, uh, do. But then I got sidetracked and, uh, So, obviously, we were all kind of suffering with, uh, COVID-19. Uh, maybe not all of us individually, but as a kind of collective group, most of the world was kind of dealing with this... Uh, like lockdown cycle and a lot of people that weren't respecting that sort of thing and it is a very very scary reality and as well i think i am extremely lucky in that i know nobody that has had covid uh my nan she's like 73 like her legs barely fucking work anymore um but all she does is like go into town and just like she does that constantly but she was really safe about it and everything. And even then, you know, I'm just very surprised that nothing happened to her. And I'm I'm very uh, kind of grateful that my own experiences um, in like my family, they haven't been bad at all. That being said, um, a family member of mine earlier this year who is very close to me, I'm not gonna like, I'm just gonna say that it like really affected me. They were in the hospital and it was very, very sudden and they are absurdly healthy. The main problem was that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't there. Um, I hadn't seen this person in months because of the lockdowns. I live on my own at university. I live in an apartment. It's it's pretty okay. Uh, you know, when the fire alarm doesn't decide to go off constantly. But I am ultimately in a box and I have been for about a year. So, or I guess like 10 months, whatever you want to call it. So not being able to have seen this person um, really affected me. And to hear that he was, like, in hospital and could have possibly, like, died without me even, like, being able to talk to them was very scary. And it was probably the scariest day of my life. And I think it told me that 2020 was a year to not really be sad about for me personally because it's already happened. It's in the rearview mirror. But I really want to spend 2021 being a lot more thankful. 
Because ultimately, this year has taught me that life is really fucking difficult. Even if you are so privileged and so lucky, which at the end of the day is what I am. I don't suffer any sort of prejudice. I don't have a, you know, I have a very supportive family. And I have a lot of strong, healthy friend groups that really kind of push me to be the best person that I can be. But this year was one that I didn't really work as hard as I could have. And I spent a lot of it self-reflecting. And ultimately, that led me to a very like stagnant kind of place in terms of my mental health. And it was just, um, this year's been rough. This year's been really rough. As I said, being stuck in a box for, um, you know, it's a decent box. But being stuck in a box for 10 months, um, especially when you have to do university work and you just can't find the environment to do it, it's scary. It's really scary. And I still feel like I'm slowly losing my mind. And no doubt it's going to be a lot like that in 2021. But now that I've talked about the negatives of 2020 for about four and a half minutes, let's talk about what went so, so well. So in 2019, I got my Twitter suspended. I still uh, remember when that happened. And it was from like February to, I want to say like maybe June, where it was just gone. And for me, that was like a very big problem where because I was just starting to do YouTube again um and putting a lot of effort into it and that was the year that I tried to understand YouTube as a platform and where I also tried to like back away from Twitter because it was naturally getting very stressful thankfully my account got restored since it was a very unfair suspension like a really weird out of context thing and I ended 2019 with about 1500 followers which is more than I had ever had on any kind of platform before and this year I am ending on 4,800 followers. And how the fuck did that happen? Well, there was a big boom in like the first week of this year because I remember I posted some redesigns or retextures of Pokemon in the newest games, but like to have their, their colors like updated to be similar to the ones in their sprite forms. And you know, who knows? Maybe that might come back at some point. I don't know. But I do want to say that 2020 had a lot of firsts for me in terms of what I created. And yeah, I realized that came, that came at like the detriment of creating videos, but I'll get to that in a bit. So modding was really fun. Um, I've done some texture mods for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, as well as Pokemon Sword and Shield, which was very recent, like November-ish. And that has been a ton of fun. It really feels like I am getting like the perspective uh, on like texture design and game design that a lot of developers uh, or a lot of people like wish that they could get for like Pokemon games. I think it's really cool. And also I never really make stuff to kind of supplant the original work of the developers. I think that it's a really um, monumental task to create a game. And I will always have respect for the people that uh, do it from scratch. You know, I'm just editing some fucking Charizard. I don't need to... Uh, you know, know how to 3D model yet. But the response to those has been really interesting. Uh, it's been quite a learning curve, how to balance that on my Twitter, where I feel like I need to be very focused on like what I create and what I put out there. So like if I recolor a Pokemon in a game that people barely emulate, uh, aka Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, or just any 3DS game for that matter, I do, I do understand why people don't particularly like reshare or retweet it. And that's fine, but that doesn't mean those projects were like any less fun. And again, you can find everything that I'm talking about on my website because I have a lot of stuff to go over. Actually, let me just bring up my website now because it's probably the best way to like categorize everything that I've done over the year. But yeah, texture edits, really, really fun. I'm looking forward to doing more in 2021 for sure. Also, something that I kind of had the idea to do very early on in the year was creating a full album of digitally recolored and upscaled art of each and every Pokemon to match their shiny palette. And that was like a community resource that I never really got finished. I was trying to work with somebody who had already done a similar job. Uh, and then I could help them with that, maybe fix some of like their colors that maybe weren't as accurate as I would have liked. And then we would have collaborated on this big release. But I still got most of Gen 1 done. I got all of the new Pokemon from the Isle of Armor and... Crown Tundra done. I got all of the prototype Pokemon from the Space World 1997 build uh, done based off of their shinies in that 
build, which I guess went finished, but hey, it's still pretty cool. And yeah, I'm really proud of how that uh, went. Oh no, also I got um, art of like the like Gen 2 Charizard, like that shit is really fucking cool. I think generally that's been the pretty big theme of this year, where I've worked really hard on like some community resources that I'm sure people really appreciate. And another one that kind of comes out of left field the more and more I think about it, uh, is all of the repel tricking stuff. During the summer and like going into, I guess, my first semester of university, I made an entire document on every single location in the game that you could use the repel trick to guarantee a Pokemon encounter, which I think could completely change the game for shiny hunters in particular. Or maybe you just want a uh, Kingla. Wait, why the fuck does that say Kingla? Okay, no, never mind, I fixed it. But whether you want to find a really rare Pokemon in a specific area, there's a whole document for that now. And it it was a lot of work, and it really hurt my eyes staring at this fucking spreadsheet for days and days on end. But a lot of people liked that, and I really enjoyed, again, creating this like resource for the community that people can use to customize their experience or to make their experience easier in like, this hyper-specific thing. And I think this then naturally transitions onto all of the prototype stuff. If it wasn't for my coverage on the Diamond and Pearl prototypes, the Gold and Silver 99 stuff, um, Pokemon Picross, the Sun and Moon like Repro uh, leaks, and especially the Pokemon Sword and Shield prototype, as well as the Let's Go Eevee prototype, which is a far bigger project than I kind of uh, thought it was going to be, then I would not have the followers that I do now. And I really want to... Why this? Oh my god, it's only 8pm. Why the fireworks? So I do want to say to my followers that I've gained off of that, please watch my videos. Uh, I know I haven't uploaded pretty much at all this year, and again, I'll get to that in a second, but my main YouTube channel is really fucking cool. Um, and I have some great ideas planned. I'm a content creator that uh, I like to think doesn't do the same thing. I'm not like the other girls. I don't do the same thing as every other Poketuber where it's some kind of stream highlight or Nuzlocke thing and not like, or top 10 or lore theory video or make my own region design. I just like to talk about game design and I think that this year I've gotten a way better understanding of it despite not really making any videos. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that weird how that, you know, works out? But seriously, I love documenting these prototypes. Even if the methods behind like how they all, were all released like anonymously on the internet is really kind of scary, I think that like kind of discovering this like new history is so rich and interesting. And I think delving into like the teeny tiny things like, oh, that trainer was like not on this route in the prototype in this specific build. And that's really interesting because like why, what, like what made them what made Game Freak like put that trainer there? Like, was it for this reason or that reason? And there are so many different things in uh, every prototype build that is super, super, super interesting to me. And that's why over on the cutting room floor, I am probably the biggest contributor by far. Uh, I've done like 99% of the work uh, for the Pokemon Let's Go Eevee prototype that came out earlier or on Christmas. And I'm still documenting stuff and noting all of the changes. And it's really, really interesting. A lot of the stuff that I didn't put in the Twitter thread. Maybe I'll tweet about it more when it's done. But that's a project that I always have going in the background. Does that make me, like, not, like, uh, brand friendly? If I talk about, pro like, Pokemon prototype stuff? Because, like, there are going to be videos of that uh, in 2021. Like, full video essays on that type of content. So, I know a lot of people have been asking me about that. I've, I've gotten so many DMs of people being like... Hey Lewis, uh, when you get back to making videos, are you gonna make a video on this uh, leak that happened? And it's it's so hard for me to say yes because I want to cover it with as much nuance. But that leak might become outdated with like more content that like comes out of nowhere in the future. So who knows? Either way, I attribute so much of my uh, like my my popularity this year from reporting on that kind of stuff. And even if I'm not the one. Uh, that's like discovering something or distributing it. Lord knows I wouldn't do that. I'm still so thankful that you guys come to me for that kind of thing. Because it genuinely feels nice to be an authority on this sort of thing. Um, and it feels nice to put out work that you know is, or like report on something that you know is being done, like you are doing it the best. Or you're the only one covering the story. And it's really interesting how that works out. Uh, what I'm not the biggest fan of, and I tweeted about this today, was uh, people like making videos on that 
but like reading my tweets out verbatim and sometimes even cropping my name out of them, which is really shitty. Uh, it's not just Pokemon YouTubers that do this. There are um, certain publications that like to rip what I say verbatim as well. And it's like, hey man, I don't have a monopoly on this, on these leaks or whatever, because I think that that would be really shitty to begin with. But I do think that if you're going to like copy what I say verbatim or just like essentially yoink what I'm doing and all like the because I, I triple check shit. I make sure that a lot of stuff is like sound for Twitter. I make it so that, you know, if somebody takes this tweet out of context, like in a vacuum, like does this um, reflect badly on like the contents of the prototype? Would it be misleading if it was taken out of context? That kind of thing. So I put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into getting like high quality stuff and Really, it's just, uh, it's it's a difficult process, especially when um, something decides to happen at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh shit, I guess I'm pulling uh, practically an all-nighter to get this information out to you guys. I know boohoo, man has to tweet about Pokemon and he cries about it, but uh, hey man, it's like, I know a lot of people wouldn't do it and a lot of people aren't doing it, so it's really cool to just be like that guy and to... Um, kind of bring all this information into the world, I guess, for a lot of you guys. I think this goes on to a thing that I don't particularly talk about, which is uh, my design and like my graphic design and how that was haha, <laughs> my passion. Uh, it's kind of hard because a lot of the content that I make is like this weird hybrid of like visual communication, like infographic type stuff, uh, general graphic design, uh, motion design, uh, like bordering on journalism at this point. Um, and also like video essay, game critique, um, like game design in general. So a lot of the stuff that I do is just in this like bubble, but it's a really big bubble and it, it makes it kind of hard to focus down what I want to do the most. And really the common denominator is Pokemon. And you know, one, one day Pokemon as a series might just die and I, you guys would all lose interest in me. But I had a hope at that point that uh, that's not the case because whatever I like to create for, I will keep creating for that, even if it burns me out just a little bit. Speaking of being burnt out, let's talk about Twitch because that was a really big thing that I was pushing for in 2019, and especially towards the, the end of 2018. I was getting some decent numbers, and I have realized that, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll probably enjoy my Twitch content. Um, so I didn't really have that much of a focus on it. Additionally, uh, and all, also, all that stuff is on the second channel now. Twitch content was weird. I tried this idea that I've been planning all year called Stream Week, where I take like a bunch of challenges or a bunch of ideas and pack them into one week per month so that it doesn't super burn me out. And then I would stream content, um, obviously like all Pokemon related, across the span of like this whole week. And then I would edit it and put it uh, onto YouTube. That, like, second half never really happened because I wasn't particularly happy with how Stream Week was going. It was a cool idea, but it felt like just a regular stream. It didn't feel too special, and honestly, I don't really have the constant, like, chat to interact with, and it's very hard to interact with friends on those streams, and it's why I'm bringing my friends back onto streams after not doing that for, like, a whole year, which is crazy to, just to think about. So, yeah, the Stream Week stuff uh, kind of died, even though I promised it. Uh, and speaking of promises, let's talk about that YouTube channel. So obviously my main content has and will always be YouTube, but this year has been especially difficult for me to contribute to that. Between having a computer that literally could not spend more than 30 seconds in Premiere Pro, uh, and also a pandemic literally like sucking my life force as I'm trapped in this room with no like creative space or no way to like get out and do something else. It kind of just trapped me in this box where it's like, I have all these great ideas for content and I have a lot of the scripts written up, but I don't have the energy to record them. I'm not happy with my voice, um, which is still a really big issue. Uh, and ultimately, I think like the super perfectionist in me came out this year more than previous years, which is kind of crazy to think about because I was always very much like that. And that's not to say my videos from like before 2020 aren't good, but holy fuck, my videos uh, this year were pretty good. All four of them at least, and if you haven't watched them, then go do that. I was gonna do a big video, like, covering all of my, like, points from my videos from this year, and, like, whether I've changed my mind on it, but it's kind of hard to do that when you only release four videos in the year. I don't have the list in front of me, but the first one was my take on Pokemon's DLC, and the idea that it's just a good thing. This was in January, like, immediately after it got announced, and, uh, yeah, I was right. Crazy. The Pokemon Home stuff as well. 
Very, very interesting. I think my opinion has soured a little bit because of the Pokemon Go stuff that happened recently. But ultimately, um, Pokemon Home as an app is still something that I've uh, spent a lot of like embarrassing hours in. And that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it must be at least pretty decent, right? My third video was on mythical Pokemon, and I can't wait until the mythical Pokemon of 2021 happens, and uh, the whole situation is just the same. And of course, we have the video on Leaf, or Green, or whatever you want to call it. Probably the biggest and, like, most important character to me from, like, my childhood in terms of Pokemon, because she was this really unique character in the manga that I super grew up with. So, like, when I think of, like, uh, that, like, beginning era of Pokemon, it feels kind of, like, bookended by uh, this character that I felt has gotten, like, really weirdly, like, shitty treatment. And, you know, hopefully that changes in the future. Probably won't. But it was nice to have a video like that off my chest. And to see the response to it is just honestly kind of amazing. Like, this is a side character who has had, like, four appearances that uh, you guys also give as much of a shit about as I do, and I'm glad that I could kind of bring all of those issues to the forefront because I don't think they've really been talked about before and I think a lot of 2021's video ideas are going to be very much uh, similar to that. I've also got to talk about the DLC sized elephant in the room and that's the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Uh, yes, there is a video on those coming. I saw the Isle of Armor video for those that don't know. I started scripting it right when the Isle of Armor had come out and I finished it um, about three months after. Um, it was a lengthy video, easily the biggest that I've ever made. Um, and if it's taken three months to script something, and then I'm going to add the Crown Tundra onto that, because I was originally going to make it happen this year, but I think rushing all of that was just not really right for me. So I'm going to... It's coming. It's going to come out when it's ready, but I swear to God, I will release that video before I die. <laughs> or at least it's going to come out uh, really fucking good. Really fucking long, ideally. Um, that's like my big present to you guys next year, depending on what other videos might come out next year. I don't fucking know. I do know, actually. That's a lie. I have a lot of good videos planned, and you guys are going to like them. I'm 100% certain, especially with how I'm like redoing the formula and kind of pushing myself. But I'm going to leave all that stuff a secret, A, because I don't want to promise something, and B, because I don't want to spoil anything. So what can I expect in 2021, and what can you guys expect in 2021? Well, let's start with the former because I think that it's probably uh, for the best, but I will probably be feeling a lot better when life returns to some sort of normalcy at some point next year. I don't know how long it's going to take for the vaccine to make its rounds, but hopefully it's fucking soon. It's also the 25th anniversary of the Pokemon series, and given the fact that 99% of my content is Pokemon focused, uh, you guys are probably going to like what I have in store for the... Uh, games that are probably going to be coming up in 2021. I can't say any more than that. No, I don't know if Diamond and Pearl remakes are happening, but I'm pretty fucking confident that they are. And also that Pokemon Snap shit. Also Unite. Oh my god, there's so much. Anyway, good content plan. That's all you need to know. On top of that, I have a secret project that I have alluded to a couple of times on Twitter, and I will not talk about it until it is done. That is really it, but I do want to say that it is probably the my favorite thing that I've been working on. I've been learning pixel art and sprite art as a result of it, and it is it's been a learning experience. Um, twenty twenty one, I picked or twenty twenty, like with the texture modding and the the sprite art that I've been practicing and the uh, general like like prototype archival stuff on the cutting room floor. Um, it's just been so exciting to like learn all this new stuff. I guess. And I really want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for 2020. My, like, my following has grown three sizes <laughs> uh, in that time. And a lot of those followers were dead followers um, because of the content that I, like, used to produce that people used to give a shit about. So the fact of the matter is, is that I have a much bigger audience now. And I'm so thankful that uh, almost 5,000 of you on Twitter uh, this isn't counting people on YouTube, so I would say, yeah, roughly like 5,000 of you guys um, really, really care what I have to say. Um, and it means the world to me, genuinely. And I thank you for being so patient, for putting up with all of my distractions throughout the year and being like, hey, Lewis, we don't care about this random thing that you made. Um, you know, that's fine. I don't really, I don't really mind. But thank you for really like putting up with that. And YouTube content is going to be, I know what works now. Like 2019 was me understanding YouTube. 2020, I feel like, was me expanding, like, my brand and putting more time into everything um, and, like, what I truly enjoy. So 2021 
I said this last year, obviously I didn't know but tw what was going to happen, but uh, 2021 is a year that I'm so, so excited for. So thank you guys. I will see you in January when I come back with videos. And that is something I'm fucking promising. So, uh, you know, don't forget it. And I will see you guys then. Peace out. Love you guys so, so much.